Okay, so today we are going to create a pause state for the game and this is going to be a temporary pause state as we do not have a pause menu. So this is just going to help us uh, help us set things for the next lecture. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and uh, change the main camera to basically be close to the player so that we don't have that weird issue. And I'm going to put this on global and then move it to where the player is right over there. And you can see it on the preview where the camera is. So we don't have that weird issue where the camera has to actually go and follow the player. It's still not, not 100% uh, where it should be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click play. And once the camera adjusted its position, I'm going to go to main camera over here. I'm going to click these three dots right here, go to copy, and I'll copy the component. I'll copy this component. And this is a very neat trick that you can use. I'm going to go to main camera. I'm going to go over here, go to paste and go to paste component values or paste or, or just paste component values right there. And now when we play the game, there will not, there will not be that issue where you saw the camera move a bit. The cannon still moves, but uh, that is not really a big issue. Okay. So now let's create the games, uh, create the pause state. So we are going to create the pause state over here. And this is going to be very simple. I'm going to click edit script so that my ID opens. And over here, we're going to create the pause state. So just because this is irritating me, I'm just going to uh, close all of the tabs that are open right here. And over here, I'm just going to make it, by the way, these regions, we haven't taken a look at them, but these regions are, I, I know I put them in the last lecture. Regions will are basically a little, uh, I think they're directives. I believe they're directives. I don't really, I don't really remember what they are. But they're basic, I think they're directives. What they do is they basically help you organize code. I don't really know what these are called. I think they're called directives. So what, uh, what they, uh, what region does is it, what region does is it just helps you organize code. So for example, if I have a region over here, so pause related, pause related functions. Whatever code I write over here, I can fold it. I'm pretty sure this is also, uh, this is also a function in Visual Studio code. So private wise on temporary, in fact, it should be temporary, temporary pause function. And it's all automatically completed this. So this is the temporary pause function. I just had to correct the spelling. So this function will run whenever the user clicks the pause, uh, clicks the pause key. This is just for testing. And in the update, we will call, call this. So update. Tempor temporary pause function. We're going to go over here. And in the if statement, we're going to write input dot get key down. And this is going to be the, um, I believe we should, we should make this the F key right now. So key code dot F, which basically means that when we push the key down, which is going to be F. And please do note that whenever you need to take keyboard keys, you use this. However, this will not work on a joystick. So this is just a temporary solution so we can test the pause. Okay, remember that. All right, so over here, we are going to check something. So this will run whenever the user clicks the key required to pause the game. Okay. So what happens is, is that when we press the F key, there can be one of two things. So we'll check if 
Okay, uh, before I go ahead, I'd like to tell you that you can also press C, you can also press, uh, you can also have escape, you can have any key that you want, basically, that is part of key code dot. Okay, so now we're going to write over here, checking if time scale is greater than zero. So time scale basically is the game's way of telling Unity how fast the engine should run. So time scale, if I go over here, you'll see the scale at which time passes. So it basically tells how how fast time should run inside of the inside of the engine. So Unity automatically completed this and I'm going to I'm going to basically write over here print game is paused. And over here I'm going to write print game is unpaused. And what this does is that when we click the F key if the time scale, which means if time is running, is greater than zero, which means it's it's greater than zero, then we are going to set the time scale to zero and we are going to print game is paused. Otherwise, if it's already zero, which in our case is, then we're simply going to set the time scale back to the value of one. And this is going to be our temporary pause state. So let's go ahead and test it. So if I go over here and if I press F, you can see that the game is paused. I click F again and the game is now running again. Similarly, if I go over here and you can see that the Sphere Collider, when I pressed F, it uh, you can see over here as well that the the Collider was uh, was basically, it, it stopped. And we can continue on and you'll be able to see that the physics uh, are even paused. You can see over here that even the physics were paused right there. So this is how you pause the game. This is one of the one of the solutions that you can use to pause the game. There are others as well, but uh, this is one of the easiest solution that many freelancers use to pause games. Um, ideally, you should always have a uh, you should you should have a you should have your game or game logic inside of a if else condition or a true condition and only pause the things or stop the things that you want to stop because sometimes when you uh, when you put time scale to zero when you put time scale to zero there are other things in the game engine that might also stop working so this is just a very quick way of pausing the game however in if you are really engineering a game and the budget is large, you will most likely pause the game by uh, putting your logic, which you want to pause, inside of a separate function. And when that function stops running, everything stops running. So that is basically basically uh, my suggestion. This is just a temporary. This is a temporary solution, and this is the solution that many game developers use when they're using the Unity engine to pause the game.